Um, good evening, everyone. Welcome to Tonalytics Masterclass. And I'm happy to be your host um, for today. My name is Bela Shukrat, and I'm a senior data associate at Tonalytics. I have up to five years experience as a data analyst. I'm proficient in tools such as Power BI, Excel, Tableau, and SQL. And before we begin today's session, can we just take a minute and tell us where you're joining us from in the comment section? Wow, thank you, Abdurrahman. Abdurrahman is joining us from Castilla. I can see Anambra. Dimeji is joining us from Toronto, awesome. Stephanie is joining us from Lagos. Fumi from Texas. This is amazing. Thank you so much for taking out your time to join us this evening or morning or afternoon, wherever you're joining us from. In Kim, I see you from Lagos. Oluwashio from Ogbomosho, thank you. Um, you can also tell us if this is your first time here so I can cheer you. Oh, someone says they can't hear me. Can you hear me? No, we can hear you. Oh, so yeah, that must yeah. be your next work. Oh, full shot. Oh, thank you. First time. It's awesome to see you here. Okay. All right. So we have different people from different time zones, the UK, from the US, and here in Nigeria. Thank you for taking your time to join us. Okay, so I don't know what that is. Okay, so we'll just move on. So for the first timers, I'm just going to tell you a bit about Analytics. We are an educational technology company and we our mission is to bridge the gap between the African community and the black folk and the tech industry. Imagine that you travel abroad or you jackpot for instance now and you, you, you go abroad, you don't have to do uh, manual skill jobs or um, any kind of job. If you have data skills, then you can compete and live a good life anywhere you are, even in Nigeria as well. And so we provide offerings such as capacity building and ability to make decision and insights with data, using data analysis, data engineering, data science, financial analysis, HR analytics, and power platform engineering amongst others. And we have capable professionals who have worked in notable industry, notable companies such as Coca-Cola, KPMG, PwC, amongst others. And um, an amazing thing about Tenalytics is the structure and the ease of learning that our participants enjoy. And today, we don't just have any facilitator to take this um, session. We have the brain behind analytics here himself, the person of Adeza Suleiman. He is the founder and he has over a decade of experience in the data analytics field. He's not just a data analyst, he's a consultant, someone very knowledgeable about the educational technology space, and he has himself trained over 8,500 participants. So trust me, he knows what he's talking about. And we are very honored to have him here come speak to us about the topic of how hard or easy it is to switch to a data analysis, analytics career. And so Adeza will be taking over now. Over to you, Adeza Suleiman. 
All right, thank you very much for that. Um, Shukrat uh, for that fantastic introduction. Okay, so we're expecting a lot more people to join us today. And, uh, but however, we'll would continue and see and have others join us along the line as the session goes on. So I'll just hit the spotlight. And of course, Shukrat has given an introduction as to what we do at Analytics. For us, we have just one mission and our mission is to help as many Africans and people of the black community to get into tech. And one of the major areas we'll be speaking about today is the data analyst role or data analytics. How easy is it to get into data? How difficult is it irrespective of where you are? Okay, so uh, Shukrat has introduced me. Uh, my name is Adeza Suleiman, uh, the founder of Tenalytics. I have a decade years of experience across data analytics and management consulting. I started my career as a management consultant, but then I switched into um, data analytics along the line. I've worked with uh, some of the biggest organizations across the globe, um, Sahara Group. I've worked with companies across Europe and the US as a contractor and consultant. And I've also worked as, across five different sectors from, um, from educational technology to financial services to energy, um, and so on and so forth. And I'll be sharing some of my wealth of experience with you today. Uh, but the focus for us is on one major area. What does it take to become a data analyst and get into tech, irrespective of where you are? I've been in the UK for quite a while now, and I'll tell you for a fact that going across different organizations, you'd hardly find people that look like me. The black folks, people of the black community, it's difficult to find them holding key technical roles like a data analyst role. And you'd usually find a particular um, ethnic group that dominates that space. So for us as a business, it's been a mission to get in as much Africans and people of the black community to get them into tech. I've been doing that for the past three years and we've been able to help over a thousand people make that switch. And when I say make the switch, right from, okay, so I'm just going to stop everybody's video uh, so we don't have any distractions. Okay, so right from the training room into their very first jobs in tech, which is the most difficult part. Okay, so I'll just mute everyone without the ability to unmute yourself so that we don't have distractions along the line. So thank you very much, guys. Our session today will be very interactive. So at some point, I'd allow you to unmute yourself so that we can have some level of interaction, okay? Uh, we've helped over a thousand people move from the classroom to getting their first jobs in tech. And that's the most difficult part. Some of, some of them are medical doctors, they've been in, some of them are lawyers, they've been in supply chain, logistics, accountants. How do, how do you move or transition as somebody who knows nothing about data? So we'll speak about that and we'll get to see what it entails. And we have very interesting um, things to talk about today. So if you give me your 90 minutes this evening, I'll walk you through the nitty gritty, every single thing you need to become a data analyst and how to also thrive within the field and get your first job in data analytics. All right, so let's go ahead and share the screen and let's get started. So Shukrat has given a background as to what we do and who we are at Analytics, your go-to place for anything tech. And of course, giving an introduction about myself. So our session today would cut across four key areas. The first area is why do you need to become a data analyst? Or why do you need to get into data analytics? What's the future outlook? What's, what's the demand for the role? What does it look like across different economies? So we'll talk about that and then we'll move on to who is a data analyst? Because a lot of people get this confused and they mix it up with so many other things, but who is a data analyst? And what are the skills? What skills do you need to become a data analyst? All right? And then I'll show you the reasons why a lot of people struggle to make that switch and make the transition to data analytics, even though the jobs are there, numerous jobs, no, the demand is unbelievably high. However, people still struggle to learn jobs as data analysts. The reason is very simple and I'll share them with you. Again, I'll also introduce our upcoming uh, programs starting on the 4th of November. 
and what the program entails. And I'll share some success stories, what we've been able to do to transform the tech space, not just across sub-Saharan Africa, but also across the globe from the US to the UK to Canada, the Middle East and across the EU as well. Um, and of course, I have a special discount for those that stay till the end of our session today. Now, when people talk about something being difficult, I'm always, I always try to stay at the middle or stay in the middle, okay? When you say something is difficult or something is easy, there is a fine line between what is difficult and what is easy. But most of the time, because of so many misconceptions and wrong information out there, it always seems impossible. I have done, I've been in the public service for 25 years. I don't think I can ever learn data analytics. That's too much for me. Or I need to know a whole lot of mathematics. I must know, I need to know different um, um, linear algebra, calculus, and so on. I must have studied computer science in the university for me to get into data analytics. So there are so many misconceptions out there. So it always seems impossible until you start to see other people do it. And then you realize that, oh, I can also do the same and I can make the switch into data as well. My first degree, my background was in industrial chemistry. I studied industrial chemistry in the university, nothing related to tech, nothing related to data. And I've been doing data analytics for close to a decade. And some of the best and fantastic analysts I've seen out there studied stuff not related to what they do today. So you see people that studied anatomy, um, physiology, and so on and so forth, doing fantastic stuff uh, within the space. And I'll share a couple of stories with you. I'll share the story of a lady who was uh, a stay-at-home a stay -at -home mom for four years, and she made the switch into data analytics. I'll also show you the story of a medical, somebody who has a medical background, getting a job as a data analyst with the NHS here in the UK with full sponsorship and how we were able to help her land that role, right? So depending on your own career path, where you are today, what you studied, I'm telling you that that's not a limitation to what you can get. Okay, so let's get into it. Now, why do you need to become a data analyst or why is it important? Is there a demand for the role? About... 10 years ago, before I made the switch, things were not, you, you don't have the type of information you have today. And it was a whole lot of, it was very difficult for me and the co-founder of Tenalytics, because we've known each other way back, Efemena. It was very difficult for us to transition. Very, very difficult because we did not have any mentors. You don't have as much information as you as you have today. So it was very difficult to get the, where, what do I learn first? After I learn Excel, for example, what do I need to learn next? Okay, do I need to learn, you know, starting from this particular area? Where do I stop? What is enough for me to learn to make the switch? Okay, it was very, very difficult to figure things out. We made a lot of mistakes. And we also saw that, look, irrespective of the mistakes and the time that it took for us to transition into the space, we realized that that was where the future was. Okay, so, so many years ago, we saw that the future was in data, the future was in tech. And the only way to remain relevant is by always looking at where the world is going. So what is the trajectory of the world, the future of work? What will the future of work look like tomorrow? What would it look like in five years' time? You must ask yourself that question. Whatever I do today, would it re remain relevant in the next five years? So these are the pertinent questions that you need to ask. So when we set up Tenalytics about three years ago, and we started helping people transition, one of the things we decided to look at, one of the major reports, apart from the analysis we also carry out, as a business, every year we do an analysis across the major job boards from Indeed to Total Jobs to read.co.uk to ZipRecruiter and so on and so forth. We do analysis to see the demand for different roles across the different economies. And where would the where would the future of work be in the in the next you know few years? We do these analysis in addition to the World Economic Forum reports, 
the Future of Work Outlook reports. And I'll be sharing the year 2020 and the year 2023, three years apart. And I always tell people whenever I have the opportunity to, or when we have sessions like this, if you are interested in moving into tech, if you're interested in changing your career from whatever you do to what you want to do tomorrow, ensure that you can tie it to the trajectory of the future of work, all right? Will my skills remain relevant next year? Will they remain relevant in the next two years, five years? These are the questions you need to ask yourself, okay? So I just took a sample, and for us to look at today, we'll look at it together. The year 2020, the, the World Economic Forum Future of Work Report. What I've also done is I've kept the link of all the reports I'll be sharing with you today. So at the end of the session, for those that stay till the end, you'd receive my slides and then you can go back to you know see the, the full reports, look at the full reports and you get to see the things I'll be explaining to you today. Now in the year 2020, you had the first 20 jobs that were going to grow in demand. And this is always an interesting report to look out for, for those you know, looking to transition. So in the next 20, in the next five years, what, would, what jobs would grow in demand and what particular roles will decrease in demand? This is always very interesting to me. Now, we looked at this in 2020, and this is the approach to selecting the programs that we offer at Analytics because we, are, we offer programs that has to be relevant, programs that you'd ensure that you stay relevant, your skills will always be in demand, at least between now and the next 10 to 15 years down the line. The very first role, I'm not sure if you can see this very clearly, so maybe what I'll do is I'll open it a bit more. I'll open it on my browser so you can see it um, a bit better. Now, but if you see what I'm highlighting, the first 20 roles that were going to grow in demand in the year 2020, you have the data analysts and data scientists. That was number one. Number two is AI and machine learning. Okay, so I'm just going to see what you're saying in the chat. You can't hear me, the audio is fine. Um, let me see, I can't hear you again. I'm sure my audio is fine. Um, Shukrat, if you can hear me, please confirm you can hear me. Yeah, so your audio is your audio is clear. Okay, please, at any point where, if at any point my audio uh, shakes up a little bit, please let me know so I address it immediately, all right? Now, if you look at the first, the first role on the list, data analysts and data scientists. Now, if you look at number two, you'd see AI and machine learning specialists. So number one is data analyst, data scientist. Number two is AI and machine learning specialists. Number three, big data specialists. Then you have number four, digital marketing. Number five, process automation specialist. Number six, business development. And it goes all the way right to number 20. Now, if you look at the very first five roles or the very first 10 roles, they're all tilted towards the data ecosystem. And if you also look at that in line with the trend today, which is in AI, machine learning, you have new technologies like Chat GPT, Bard by Google, and you have stocks like uh, manufacturers, chip manufacturers like NVIDIA skyrocketing simply because of the rise of AI. You'll see that the reports generated by the World Economic Forum always stands its ground right? The demand for these jobs are always on point. So three years ago, 2020, comparing what you had in 2020 to what you have today, they are very similar in terms of where the jobs would be in the next five years, at least. So here you have from 2023 to, to 2027. So where would the future of work be? Where would the demand the, the roles that will be high in demand, the roles that if you have those skills today and you get started in the next five to 10 years, you still remain relevant. Your job still remains very high in demand. And for any job that is high in demand, what happens? Remuneration is also fantastic. So if you look at this, number one, you'd see AI and machine learning. So, so much um, advancement in that area 
with the likes of the new generative AI technologies, new uh, chat GPT and so on and so forth. You'd see sustainability, sustainability specialist number two, Oh, sorry. So I have the links there. So maybe let's look at it in a bit more. Let's look at it in the browser so that it's a lot bolder and you can see it a bit better. Okay. So it's a bit tiny on the slides. You might not see that very clearly. So let's look at it on the browser and I'll maximize so we see, we see it a bit more clearly. So again, you want to ensure that you hear people talk about, so that's the future of work reports. Um, this was in May 2023, the World Economic Forum. And I'm just going to scroll all the way down to where we have the declining jobs and the growing jobs. Okay, so you have the jobs that are growing and you also have the jobs that are declining. So let's get there to see what those jobs are. And when you decide to make the switch or make the transition, you are doing that deliberately from an informed point of view and not just based on what everybody else wants to do. All right, so let me just look for that and let's see if we can project it a little bit bolder. Um, okay. Yep, so there you go. Um, so when you get the reports, when you get the slides, please go into um, figure 3.3, you have the new jobs, and the lost jobs. So where will the jobs be in the next five years? The very first is AI and machine learning specialist, sustainability specialist, business intelligence analyst. Business intelligence is a derivative of data analytics. You have information security analysts, fintech engineers, data analysts and data scientists, robotics engineers, big data specialists, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at the jobs that are declining, and if you, are, if you find yourself in any of these roles, you can rest assured that in the next five years, you'd have a whole lot of decline in terms of the demand of your skills. Number one, bank tellers and clerks, the related clerks, postal service clerks, cashiers and ticket clerks, data entry clerks, administrative and executive secretaries, um, stock keeping clerks, accounting, bookkeeping and payroll, home appliance installers, legislators and officials, and so on and so forth. So these are the jobs that are declining by the numbers. And in the next five years, you can see the roles. So this is something that is very, very important for anybody who wants to make a transition, irrespective of the, um, the career you want to make that transition into. It's important that you tie it into the relevance. Where will the job be in the future, okay? So it's pertinent that we look at this and this informs a whole lot of the decisions we take in terms of offering the different programs, offering capacity building um, at different workshops, offering different skills acquisition programs. I'll give you that the skills you need to stay competitive for the best jobs out there. So let's get back to the slides. Now, I've put the links for you there so you can download the full report and read it at your own convenience. Now, also looking at the IMF projection for data analysts, in the year 2030, you have a decline, you have a gap within the work, the, the, the future of work. 85 million tech workers would be needed, all right? there'll be a global shortage of tech workers by the year 2030. And the reason is very simple. Now, in the UK, for example, you have 30,000 roles, data analyst roles always available year in, year out, 30,000. The universities, immigrants can only cover 10,000 of those roles every year. So just imagine having 30K vacancies and then the universities, graduates, masters, PhDs, immigrants into the country can only cover 10,000 of those roles. So what happens to the remaining 20,000? And this is just the UK economy. Across the US, you have gaps in millions, also in Canada, in Africa, and so on and so forth. And the IMF has projected that by the year 2030, you'd have a gap of 85 million roles. So the jobs are there, but why are people not taking advantage of these jobs? 
Why are we not getting these jobs? That's the question I have always asked. And that's the question I'm asking today as well. Now, one of the things I've seen across board is, I'll give a typical example here in the UK. I've interacted with so many Nigerians and you'd find out that everybody wants to get into care. Domiciliary care workers, um, people that take care of, so care workers are simply people that take care of older people or people that can't take care of themselves. Not that that's a bad career or not to talk down on that particular career path. However, I call it the herd mentality simply because everybody you find wants to do that same thing because that's all they know. So either by association, the people they associate themselves with or the information available to them at that particular point in time. So you find a lot of Africans, you find a lot of Nigerians doing the menial jobs doing working in warehouses working in care and so on whereas you have a whole lot of demand in the area of data analytics and the tech career path but we can't just take advantage of those opportunities and that's the reason we keep bringing the awareness to everybody look you might have you might be on the call today you have your colleagues you have your brothers your sisters your cousins that you feel can benefit from this you don't have to always look to get getting that menial job. You can do a lot better, right? We want to get into different countries, different organizations in those countries and seeing the Nigerians taking over, taking advantage of all the opportunities, numerous opportunities available. And I'll share some of the success stories with you, like I mentioned, simply by getting the skills that you need to compete for these jobs. And it can be very easy to get these skills. How do you get the skills? How do you get into data analytics? Or who is a data analyst and what does a data analyst do? I'll be sharing that with you shortly. And of course, you can also get access to these reports. I've also left the link for you there, the IMF report to read it is also very fantastic. It shows you the global shortage and what um, the demand for these roles would look like in the next uh, seven years, in the year 2030. Now, who are data analysts and why are data analysts so important? Okay, we've seen the demand. There is a whole lot of demand for data analysts across the globe, a whole lot of demand for tech, people in tech, men and women in tech. As long as you find yourself in the tech ecosystem, you remain competitive for jobs available due to emerging technologies and trends across the different economies you find yourself. So who are data analysts and why are data analysts very important? I would like, I would like somebody to answer this question before we move on. Okay. Um, Joan, you want to say something? Yes, I believe. I think it isn't in the chat box. No, I didn't send it to the chat. It's on my slide. Okay. Yes, so I'll just highlight in that I have the link here on my slide. So once you get the slide later at the end of the session, you have the opportunity to read all these reports at your own convenience um, after the session, okay? So who are data analysts? I want somebody who would like to tell me who is a data analyst and why are data analysts important, okay? Or let's start with the very first question. Who is a data analyst, okay? If you want to answer you can send it into the chat or ask i would ask you to unmute yourself dimeji dimeji tom go ahead please i've asked you to unmute thank you so much efemina to me yeah, as you, not efemina oh sorry <laughs> i i've joined your session yeah. once or twice i couldn't tell the difference okay so good afternoon to everyone Data Absolutely. analysts are, you know, professionals, you know, whose job primarily is to, you know, gather data, whether internal or external data, interpret these data and use the, these data to solve problems. So Fantastic. that's the answer who a data analyst is. What's the second question? Why are they important? Okay, of course, Um, data analysts are important because it is the future of the world generally. The world is going into automation, into you know, 
technology driven you know automation and because of this a lot of data will be needed and data analysts alongside data engineers and the like would always be needed in order to put together data and to solve solution with this data i hope, so I hope that answers it 100% um, Dimeji, thank you very much for that. I love the fact that you use the word problem solving. I also love the fact that you said building solutions to the problems that we have. We'll get more questions, okay? So i would have other people contribute as well. Thank you very much, Dimeji. So I know Dr. Obongo also wanted to contribute and Chike Ziana Diola would have the opportunity to do that in the next few slides. Now, as a typical African or a typical Nigerian, we answer questions by asking another question, all right? So here, here again, I want us to answer this question. And I'll, you'll get to see what a data analyst does, okay, practically. But Dimeji has given us an overview of the, the, the role of a data analyst. Data is generated every single second. But if data is useless, if we can't extract anything from the data itself. Okay, so let's answer these two questions. Now, imagine you work for a company, a travel company, and this travel company has been making losses. Okay, they've never made a profit. They've always recorded losses year in, year out. So they decided that in the year 2023, we want to find out the preference of our customers. We want to know, number one, where is the preferred destination of our customers? Where would our customers love to go? That's question number one. Question number two, we want to answer when is the preferred month of travel, okay? So if we know where our customers want to go, when will they like to go to that location, all right? So these are the two questions we want to answer. And all you have been given is a data set that looks like this, all right? Now, this is not the entire data set. You still have a whole lot of colons and rows. Sorry, you have a whole lot of rows at the bottom, of course, but of co I just screenshotted the data just to have um, that picture of what the data looks like itself. But this is the data in rows and colons. You have a colon that says timestamp. You have another colon that says gender, destination, time of travel, and so on and so forth. So how do you answer these two questions? The first one, where is the preferred destination by our customers? The second is, when is the preferred month of travel? So when you know where they want to go to, you also want to find out when they want to go to that location. So who can answer the question from the data we have on the screen? Can anybody? answer that question. If you want to, you can raise your hand. I'll ask you to speak and then we'll get to hear from you. Can we answer these two questions from the data that we have? Anybody? We are looking very closely. Some people are zooming into their phones for those connecting with their mobile phones. And we're trying to see what is our data saying? Does this make any sense? Can I get anything from what we have on the screen. But yes, my questions are valid. Can somebody try to answer these questions? Okay, Dimeji again, willing to bail the cart. So Dimeji, I'll ask you to unmute yourself one more time and answer the question from the data you have. Yeah, thank you. I think um, the preferred destination without using data analytics tool, you know, on the surface is Paris, you know, because you have more people going to Paris. And um, the time to travel, is um December because I can say couple of twelve and not only December and also May because I can see couple of fives too. So that's on the surface. That's on the surface. I like the word on the surface because, like I told you, you have a whole lot more data available. A whole lot. All right. So now this is only what you can see at the top. What you have at the bottom, you have no idea. What if you have a, you have other months below that shows that this is where the customers would like to travel to and so on and so forth. So let's ask Chikeze. Chikeze, go ahead, please. Chikeze, I've asked you to unmute yourself. All right, go on. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening, Chikeze. Hello, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. 
Depending Go ahead. on your location. We can hear yeah, you loud. From, all right, thank you, sir. Um, from from what I'm seeing here, um, I would say the preferred location will be um this uh, Berlin. My reason okay. being that uh, the Paris he said is already saturated from what I am seeing that okay. people are already trooping into Paris. Then, uh, and I have less persons going into Berlin. So mm -hmm. I prefer to say, I'll go to Berlin. Then okay. the preferred month from what I am seeing here is, um. so I don't know the, the arrangement of this date. I don't know if, it, if May is first or if dates day is first or month is first. If if month is first, that is to say, February 11th. No, no, no. So the dates are because the one where you It seems have... that that's the first time people have. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's fine. Thank you very much, um, Chikezie, for contributing. And I like the fact that we have different um, answers and different opinion about the preferred destination and also the preferred month of travel. I'll ask the same question again, but using a different method this time around. Okay, so I want you to also tell me the same questions, the same set of questions. Looking at this, where is the preferred destination? And when is the preferred month of travel? Where is the preferred destination? And when is the preferred month of traveled same set of questions looking at the charts we have on the slide okay so if you want to respond just use the raised hand icon or hand raise icon i'll ask you to unmute yourself so collins i've asked you to unmute can you tell us what you think collins all right good evening everybody um can you hear me loud and clear go ahead please all right. Uh, judging from the dashboard, I think uh, the travel by destination, I think Paris has the highest because it has the, from the bar chart, it's showing 169. Then okay. going from the date, I think November is the, because flowing with the chart, travel by month, the chart is showing, okay, showing 12th, that's December. Yeah, December is the month highly traveled. Fantastic. That's my observation. Thank you very much for that, Collins. Uh, that was brilliant. So you, I can see about 10 people raising their hands. The very first one, we had just two people, but now we have 10 because now it is it is more, it is clearer and it is apparent that December is the preferred travel month, while Paris is the preferred destination. So this was a survey carried out by that company because they want to know what their customers are saying so they can take a decision to say that okay if our customers would like to travel in december and they want to go to paris let's organize travel packages for this particular destination during this particular month it's easier to get more people to come on board when you are able to take decisions from a data point of view now, I want to ask my final question before I move on. Looking at this and looking at this, which is easier to take a quick decision on what the business needs to do. If we are to decide, we'd simply say, this is what we need to do. Create travel packages for this or create travel packages during this particular period. Which do you think is easier to make a decision? I want somebody who hasn't spoken. So Deborah, please go ahead. I've asked you to unmute yourself, which is easier. Why do you think it's easier? Hello, everyone. I'm Hi, Deborah. Deborah from Ghana. Okay, so um, I think the dashboard is, makes it very easy to interpret the data because um, looking at the dashboard, it's basically give a summary of um, each column. Right, so you are able to identify the various um, um, questions. Yeah, the, you are able to uh, answer the various, you know, questions.
that is what I think. All right. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts with us, Deborah. And I, I agree with you 100%. Now, when I show the very first, you know, um, data, the, the snapshot of the data, only two people could speak. And Dimeji gave a caveat that, look, on the surface, I'm telling you this based on what I can see. But there might be something else in here. I can't see it just from looking at it, but I'm telling you that this is what I can see. However, everybody is convinced without a doubt that December is the preferred travel month and Paris is the preferred destination. So as a company, you can take a decision. You can decide to organize events, organize travel packages because you know what the customers want and you're able to visualize that using data analytics your data analytics skills so as a data analyst your role is very simple just like Dimeji said your role is to help businesses take data driven decisions by analyzing and interpreting data okay so you see this data that looks confusing. You had to zoom in. You had to look carefully. You had to do a manual count. How many pari? One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth. Taking this data, converting it into something that looks like this so that the business can take decisions based on what they can see rather than just guessing, oh, I have five years of experience doing this, or I have 10 years of experience doing this. So this is the way it should be done based on my gut feeling. Having the data to analyze, interpret helps businesses take data-driven decisions. And I'll tell you for a fact today, you, there is no organization that can grow to that level and stay competitive in a fierce business environment and remain in business without the help and abilities of data analysts within the organization. All right, because you need somebody to crunch the numbers, interpret the numbers, and help you to support your decision making that are data driven, which are very objective. Nobody is talking based on gut feeling, but you're supporting your years of experience with data driven um, insights. And that's the beauty of a data analyst. You are there to answer questions, you are there to solve problems. Now, the ability to take all these data sets and build something that looks very good, like this dashboard that is easy to see. How many people responded? 373. How many of them were male? 196, female 177. When would they like to travel? December. Where would they like to travel to? Paris. And number two is the Maldives. What type of activities would they like to be engaged in? The group activities, 46%, individual activities, 53%, kind of very close, but most of them would want individual activities. So you get all these insights. So you can take decisions. We're not going to create just anyhow packages for our customers, but we will create those packages based on what the data is telling us. So as a data analyst, your role is absolutely important. And a, a data analyst will look at a, the role of the data analyst from three key perspectives. Number one is the scope of analytics, the type of data, and then the technology that a data analyst would have to deploy. All right. But we've seen from the previous slide that your role as a data analyst is to take data, interpret and analyze the data to help companies, your businesses, take data-driven decisions. So as a data analyst, you are doing what we call descriptive and diagnostic analytics, right? So you have different phases of analytics. As a data analyst, you are working on two phases out of the four phases of data analytics. Number one is descriptive. You are answering the question, what happened? So as a data analyst, you are helping the company answer questions on what happened. What happened in January? What happened in, the, in Q1 2023? What happened last year, 2022? So when you build a dashboard that looks like this, you are simply describing the data that you have. How many customers responded? 
in December, what happened in December? A lot of people want to travel in December. So you are describing, you are answering the question, what happened? And that's descriptive analytics. So when you see a dashboard like this, showing 50% of this, 20% of that, 196 male, 177 female, you are describing what you have in the data. All right. And it's simply called from the word describe, it is called descriptive analytics. Okay. So as a data analyst, you do a lot of descriptive analytics. And then you'd also do diagnostic analytics, which is why did it happen? All right. So when you know what happened, the next question is why? Why do people want to travel in December? Or why do people want to go to Paris? A lot of people want to see the Eiffel Tower. A lot of people take their annual leave during the month of December so they can travel and have fun with their families and their friends and so on and so forth. All right. Why did we have an increased sale or increased revenue in the month of February compared to the month of January? Oh, in February, we ran a promotion. So the number of customers we were able to get increased. So answering the question why something happened is called what? Diagnostic analytics. And you have to dig a little bit deeper into the data, compare with trends, look, look for trends, look for patterns, and also compare with events that could have led to certain things happening within the business. All right. So that's the purview, the scope of the data analyst, descriptive and diagnostic, answering the question what happened and why it happened, All right? Then you move to the type of data. As a data analyst, you work with something we call structured data, okay? So what structured data? So you saw the data I showed you, the snapshot, timestamp, um, destination, time of travel. You had all those things in colons and rows. So when you have data that looks like colons and rows, it is structured data, any data that can be fitted into colons and rows. Okay, so you have timestamp, you have gender, you have destination. Every single header has its own respective colon. And then you have records or rows as well. So when you have data that looks like that, when you open your data and it opens up in Excel, when you look at a data set and the data looks like this, this is called structured data. Data that can be fitted into what? Colons like that and rows. That structured data. So a data analyst would work largely with structured data, all right? What type of technologies would help you create dashboards that look like the one I showed you or describe your data and find out why it happened and diagnose the data? So you have problem solving. That's the very first thing that you need as a data analyst, problem solving. Now, a lot of people don't talk about this a lot, but I'll tell you for a fact that problem solving is that number one skill that would help you solve and help you answer all the questions that you need to answer. The tools like Excel and the rest are just there to help you carry out the task that you've already identified or solve the problem that you've already defined. To define that problem, to find out why that problem happened and where to look at, you need to have problem solving skills. So you need, to you need to have the ability to write a problem statement. You need to know how to break problems into multiple parts. You need to know how to segment those multiple parts into mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive parts. So that by the time you solve all those simple parts that you've broken, and you solve them one after the other, you end up solving the entire problem. You need to know the approach and the techniques to deploy when solving a problem within the analytics space, leveraging techniques like the CRISP DM, something we call the CRISP DM framework. And what's the CRISP DM? Cross, CR is for cross, the cross industry, Okay, pardon my handwriting, the cross industry standard process. Okay, standard and P is for process. The cross industry standard process 
for data mining. This is the framework that you deploy when solving problems as a data analyst. So problem solving is very critical because that's where the that's where the solution starts from. Identifying the right type of problem, getting to the root cause of the problem, leveraging different techniques like the five whys, leveraging the CRISPDM framework, the McKinsey Missy model, the prioritization matrix, knowing what to prioritize, what to solve first, what to solve next, and so on and so forth. Once you've done that, you then move on to Excel, Microsoft Excel. A whole lot of you, you've heard about Excel. Oh, Excel is that tool that is basic. People talk about Excel. Everybody knows Excel. But how many people can use Excel? How many people can build fantastic stuff using Excel? All right? So that's the question. How do you get data into Excel, create charts, create dashboards, and fantastic stuff, just like the dashboard I showed you? How do you use different functions? your VLOOKUP, your INDEX and MATCH, your XLOOKUP, and so many other functions to help you come to a solution for a problem that you're looking at. So once you've understood Excel, which gives you the background and the fundamental into data, you then move to Microsoft Power BI. Microsoft Power BI. So Power BI is that data visualization tool the dashboard I showed you earlier was built using Power BI, right? And the beauty of Power BI is you can create BI solutions. And what is BI? Business Intelligence Solutions. By connecting your Power BI to a data warehouse, wherever the company has its data, you connect your Power BI to that data warehouse, and then you transform the data, extract the data, transform, and then you load the data into your Power BI and build amazing visualizations to help the company take decisions on a regular basis, on a daily basis into the future. So you're not building that same dashboard every single day. You build it once and every day the company can go there, the, the key stakeholders who needs to take decision based on what they can see, can go there and see the dashboard and can make those right decisions from that dashboard. Once you've known Power BI, you then move to Tableau. Tableau is a similar tool, just like Power BI. Tableau is also a BI tool and also used for data analytics. Now, the beauty of understanding how to use Tableau and Power BI is it gives you the best of both worlds, okay? Because you'll find organizations that would have a preference for Tableau. Other organizations would have a preference for Power BI. So rather than having knowing Power BI and not knowing Tableau or knowing Tableau and not knowing Power BI, knowing the two gives you a better advantage at getting that job because you won't have a limited you know, um, view or limited opportunity to apply into jobs because you have the two um, BI tools within your toolkit. Once you've learned problem solving, number one. Number two, you've learned Excel. Number three, you've learned Power BI. Four, you've learned Tableau. You then move to SQL, SQL, Structured Query Language. And this is me giving you the process to getting into data analytics. A whole lot of people get it confused and they learn all sorts of unnecessary tools and waste the whole time. At the end of the day, they really cannot transition because they're spending time learning irrelevances. So SQL, Structured Query Language, that's the tool to interact with databases. Organizations will not have their data in Excel files. They would have their data in databases, data warehouses. How do you access the data? How do you get the data into your Excel, into your Power BI? You need to understand SQL. How do you even do your analysis straight from the database? you need to understand SQL. Any role you find yourself that has anything data attached to it, you must understand SQL. You can't run away from it. That's the language of databases. That's the language of data warehouses. And as a data analyst, your business is with data. So wherever that data is stored, you must have the key to open that you know, warehouse up or open up the database to get your data. And that key is SQL, all right? Once you've learned that, you need to also learn Microsoft Fabric. If you've heard about Microsoft Fabric, type in a yes into the chat. If you've learned about, if you know what Microsoft Fabric is, you know what Microsoft Fabric is, just type in a yes 
into the chat. If you know what Microsoft Fabric is, type in a yes into the chat. I know some of you might have heard about it. Perhaps you haven't used it before. Okay, just one person, Sukomi, Ola Sukomi. Vivian says no. Now, Microsoft Fabric is a new technology by Microsoft, which is, I call it an all-in-one platform. All right? So what Microsoft are trying to do today is rather than having different analytic tools separated here and there, you have a platform that warehouses all your data solutions from how you do your data analytics to your data engineering, to your data science, everything in one single platform. Now, why is it important for you to understand Fabric? Organizations would start to request and start to look for employees or prospective employees that have the skill to help them make that transition or help them make that migration from where they are to using the Microsoft Fabric platform, okay? So having the skill gives you an advantage over that other person who, who does not have the skill in Microsoft Fabric. So it's something you'd also need to learn. And last but not the least, which is my newly found love, chat GPT. It looked, I can bet it that 99% of you don't know the power of chat GPT, 99%. We've had so many sessions. We've had so many uh, free sessions like this showing how to leverage chat GPT as a data analyst, as a data scientist. Chat GPT will transform the way we live and the way we work, completely transform humanity. All right. Today, you find yourself in situations where you don't need to think too much anymore. I want to start building something. I want to build a machine learning model. I want to solve a problem. I don't need to think too much because chat GPT can help me solve all these problems. All right. So again, this is the dumbest. This is the chat GPT today is, is like a child starting. So it's all the amazing things chat GPT can do. It's like a child starting uh, kindergarten or that child in nursery one or nursery two, because this is the dumbest chat GPT would ever be. Day in, day out, you have newer versions of chat GPT coming up. So nowadays, I was discussing with somebody the other day, he's a medical doctor working in a consulting company, um, helping them build medical related solutions and so on. And he said that, look, when I'm recruiting today, I don't really care about how good you are with different tools. I care about how good you are with the use of chat GPT and prompt engineering, all right? How to write the correct type of prompts into chat GPT to give you the right type of results that you should get. Because if you understand how to use chat GPT, your Excel becomes excellent. Your Power BI becomes fantastic. Your Tableau becomes awesome. You never make mistakes when you write your SQL queries anymore because you have ChatGPT as a tool to help you diagnose problems, debug your codes in SQL if you have any issues and so on and so forth. So that's the power of ChatGPT. And of course, you can't be in data today. You can't be a data analyst without the understanding of how to leverage tools like ChatGPT for data analytics. So that's one of the things you also need to learn. You also need to move along with the trend and the new technologies coming up today. And there's always this debate or this divide between, um, will or this question saying, will chat GPT take over my job? Or will AI take over my job? And so on and so forth. But AI would complement what you do. AI would never take a data analyst job or a data scientist job or a data engineer's job, as the case might be. AI would help you optimize and make you a whole lot better at what you do today. But remember, you had ChatGPT 3.5, you had you have ChatGPT 4, and the technologies are they keep on going and improving every single day. So the question is: in the scheme of things, where do you find yourself? How do you key into the trend and key into the opportunities that exist? There, there has never been, there have never been the and you know a better time to get into tech than today because it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier to learn. There are so many tools to make you more efficient as you get the job done. So this is an overview 
of the data analyst and what the data analyst is all about from the scope of what they do, what they need to look at, the kind of questions they answer in a company, the type of data they work with and the different technologies. And of course, I've also broken them down for you here as well. Okay, from problem solving, I talked about to Excel, to Power BI, to Tableau, data storytelling, chat GPT for analytics, and Microsoft Fabric for analytics as well. And as a data analyst, a lot of people ask me the question, oh, what's the salary like? Even in Nigeria, what's the salary like? In, if I work in Nigeria, if I work in Kenya, if I work in South Africa, if I work in the UK, what's the salary like for a data analyst? I'll give you for the three major economies. However, as a data analyst, one of the beauty is you get to control how you work because your work can be done from home. You also can go to the office. So you can negotiate for hybrid roles. When I was in Nigeria and after COVID, I was literally at home for close to a year. I never had to step into the office or, until we eventually decided that, okay, we've stayed at home for so long. Let's get back into the office. We started going to the office once, twice a week, and so on and so forth. And I could do my work from home. All I needed to do was have a VPN or my have a VPN and connect to the data warehouse in the office. And I have access to the data, right? You also have data in the cloud today. So irrespective of where you are, you can also get to work for your organization, wherever you are. So that's one of the beauties. But in the UK, you have 40,000 pounds per annum as a data analyst. And this is the average per annum in the UK. I've seen instances where or people have gotten jobs, 50,000 pounds, 60,000 pounds as beginners. It's ridiculous and difficult to believe. I did not believe the guy that got the job for 60,000 pounds in the UK a gentleman from Nigeria, he's been an accountant in the oil and gas industry, moved to the UK with his, with his family. And then after joining our program and completed his data analytics program, he said, look, I'm applying to jobs and I want a job that will pay me as high as 60,000. And I told him, I was actually telling him that I don't think it's possible. All right, you need to um, lower your expectation, look for something, you know, look for a salary that is more reasonable so you can easily get a job. And from there, you can always negotiate upwards. But he insisted. And guess what? He got the job, 60,000 pounds, working with one of the largest data consulting firms in the UK. He's on the slide here as well. Of course, I'm not going to tell you who he is because of um, you, everybody knows his salary now, but then he got a job for 60,000 pounds and he's doing phenomenally well in the UK. In Canada, your average salary per annum is about 64,000 Canadian dollars and in the US, 72,000 US dollars, all right? And these are the eight skills that you need to learn, okay? From number one to number eight. And how long does it take you to learn these skills? Four months. You can transition and get into data analytics within the space of four months. Three months project-based classes and one month internship. And when we say project-based classes, why is that different from your typical class, the way, you've, you, the way you've learned right from primary school to high school to the university, your master's and so on? Why is that different? Now you go to the university and the way you learn is by reading um, writing assignments, research papers, coursework, and you learn nothing relevant to solving real world problems. So if you are put in an organization today, and this cuts across so many um, regions, not just Nigeria. So in the past, you'd hear things like, oh, in Nigeria, you learn only theory. Guess what? In the UK, you learn only theory as well. You learn data analytics or data science and so on. You find out that, and you find this very late, when you're almost done with your master's or your PhD, well, PhD is a bit more research-based, is expected. However, you find out your, 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 during your master's that you've learned nothing relevant to real-world applications of the things you've, you've, you've learned in school. So how do you learn in a project-based environment? Project-based learning is simply working on projects that are likely going to get 
similar projects you'd work on in the real world when you get a job as a data analyst. Okay, now you saw the example I gave at the beginning. How was that project built? Very simple. We had a session like this and we got data from different people, created a survey instrument, a form, shared the link to the form to people. They filled the form and as they were filling the form, it was updating on the Power BI dashboard. So how do you work on similar projects? How do you solve projects that you're going to find in the real world to help learn the skills and how to apply those skills? So all the different types of projects I've worked on over the last 10 years of my career, FMNA as well, over a decade, and so many other professionals from different other organizations. We brought those projects together, of course, changed so many things because of data privacy issues, and converted them into projects that you'd use to learn in class. So you are learning by working on projects that somebody in McKinsey solved in real life. You're working on projects that somebody in Sahara Group worked on and came up with a solution in real life. So you're working on real life projects. And that's how you learn. When you learn a VLOOKUP in Excel, you learn something else in Power BI. You learn how to write the calculate DAX in Power BI. You implement it on a real life project. And that's how you learn in a project-based environment. And when you learn for three months, you have one month internship. So you also get to intern. Now your internship is where within the space of a month, you'd work on four different projects that are real life based and you put into your portfolio, all right? You have your internship projects in a portfolio and this gives you proof of work. It shows any employer that, look, I have the skills. These are the projects I've worked on. You can click on the link on my, on the link on my, in my CV to look at my portfolio and see the type of projects that I've worked on and I've solved. That's one of the major issues, one of the major challenges why people are not getting jobs because they don't have any proof of work. All what you have is fancy stuff on your CV that shows that I know this, I know that, I'm proficient in this. However, can you show me what you've done? So during your one month internship with us would help you build a portfolio of projects. So apart from the projects you worked on during your three months in class, you'd work on a minimum of about 12 different projects. In addition to the four projects during your mentor, during your internship, you have about 16 projects in your portfolio. So anybody who goes into your portfolio would see all the amazing stuff you've done, the quality of the project you've also solved and so on and so forth. And that's how to create proof of work. And you'd see why that is very important. A whole lot of people that have come to me and say, oh, Adesa, I've been trying to get a job for the last two years. I've been in the UK and I've been doing only care. I want to move from care into data analytics. I have learned on YouTube. I have learned on Coursera. I have done this, but I still cannot transition. The first question I ask them is, can you send your work to me? Can I see the type of projects you worked on? And from there, I can assess your skills. I can know how good you are. Most of them, 99.9% .9 of them don't have a portfolio. So how do you get a job? How do I tell that you're good enough? All right. So that's the way you learn with us at Tenalytics. And we have our classes um, Saturdays and Sundays, okay, to make it flexible for anybody who wants to get into the class. Now on Sundays, you don't have a live class. On Saturdays, you have a live class. And what does a live class look like? The live class is where you have somebody like me as your trainer or your facilitator who would show you how we work on projects, we'll show you how to solve projects every Saturday. So your Saturday classes are practical. While Sundays, you, we give you something we call watch me do it videos, all right? Watch me do it. The watch me do it videos are simply bite-sized videos that show you different concepts in the area of data analytics. Now, on Saturday, you come back to the live class and then we work on projects together, how to solve projects. So you have the opportunity to ask questions real time and get your questions answered. 
All right. So depending on where you are, just like we have on this call, some people joining from the US, some joining from Canada, some joining from the UK, from Nigeria, from Ghana, and so on and so forth. Now, if you are in Nigeria, you are in the UK, for example, similar time zone. On Saturday, your class happens 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., three hours on Saturday. OK, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Now we have a second class for those in a different time zone entirely. So imagine you are in the US, you cannot join the class between 11 to 2. That would be too early for you. So 11 a.m. in the UK, for example, would be around 5 a.m., 6 a.m. in some areas in the US. So for you to have a class that fits and suits your own time zone, we have a second class also on Saturday from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, West Africa time or British summer time, which of course in the US, that would be around your own 11 a.m. In, um, in the US or the Eastern time, or if you're in Canada, Toronto, Canada time, and so on and so forth. So we, we have a flexible blended approach that suits everybody irrespective of where you are across the globe. Saturdays is when you have your live class. Sundays, you don't have a live class. You have something we call the watch me do it. And these are the, this is this slide alone. If you can take a screenshot of this slide, this is all it takes for you to equip yourself with the skill, the technical part of what you, what you need to break into data analytics. This is the technical part. Now, the technical part forms 50% of the job, okay? So you want to break into data analytics. Technically, learning this, all what you have from one to eight, gives you 50% of the requirements to break into data analytics. So how do you get the other 50%? I'll share that with you as we wrap up our slide. Now, one of the mistake people make is I've learned data analytics. I'm a data analyst now. I want to start searching for jobs. They search for only data analyst related roles. So you go on read.co.uk, you go on zip recruiter and you, you type data analyst. And when you see a job title of business intelligence analyst, you ignore it. But what are the skills required for business intelligence? Number one, SQL. Number two, Power BI. Number three, Tableau. These are the three key skills for a business intelligence analyst. The same set of skills you'd learn as a data analyst, all right? So a lot of people make this mistake and it makes the job application process very difficult and cumbersome because you're applying to just one particular type of role, which is a data analyst role. But you can work as a supply chain analyst. You can work as a sales analyst, logistics analyst, operations analyst, product analyst, marketing analyst, business data analyst, business data analyst. This is one common you know, variation of the data analyst nomenclature that you find out there, business data analyst. So you have all these roles available. All you have to do, look out for them and look through the job requirements. Do I match the requirements? Can I apply for these roles and eventually get them? So these are the different career paths you can join when you complete your data analytics program, all right? So some of the top reasons why people struggle, I mentioned it before, I've given you a snapshot of what you need, step-by-step step from one to eight, from problem solving, to chat GPT for data analytics. But why do people struggle? Number one, they don't have these skills, all right? They watch everything they see on YouTube. They, they have about 20 Udemy courses that they bought, but they get stuck and they can't move on from there. So it becomes difficult for them to transition. That's number one that I've seen as a major challenge that people have. They don't have the complete skills because they've struggled, they've watched so many videos without a structured learning approach. Number two, no proof of work. You keep on explaining how good you are. Show me the projects you worked on. Do you have a portfolio? No, you don't have. So all the best you can do is to keep on explaining and explaining without any evidence. All right. So no proof of work, which is also very crucial to you landing a job. And number three, 
you don't have work experience on your CV and you also don't have interviewing skills. All right. Because guess what? You, you are very good with Excel. You are the best Power BI. Um, you can create the best types of visualizations using Power BI. But I ask you a very simple question like, oh, tell me about a time you used data analytics to solve a problem. Or tell me about introduce yourself. Can I get to meet you? And then you start telling us your life history. OK, so interviewing skills is also very, very important. So these are the three major reasons that we have seen at Analytics as to why people cannot transition and get the job. So when you know where, when you know where the problems are, it's easy for you to then bridge the gap. Now, with the experience issue, which is also one of the major challenges people find, the solution is very simple. Imagine working on about 16 different projects during the four months of your training with us. After the 16 different projects that you work on, you also get the opportunity to include Tenalytics on your CV as a consulting experience. Because that's what we tell everybody. Look, employers would not, they would not um, entertain the fact that, oh, I'm a learner. I want to grow in your company. Why would you want to grow in my company at my own expense? No, I want somebody that would come in and hit the ground running. All right. That's what an employer would want. They want somebody that knows their stuff. But now you've gone through the training. You are very good with Excel, very good with Power BI, Tableau, SQL. But on your CV, you have um, the last place you've worked, you've worked as a care worker. Or the last place you worked, you worked in the warehouse. Or you worked as, um, you worked as a technician in an aviation company. How does that relate to data analytics? So what we also provide to you is list analytics as part of your work experience. Okay, list analytics in your CV or on your CV. All right, now what happens is very simple. The organizations reach out to us when they're doing their reference checks, when you eventually have scaled through the interview process, they reach out to us, oh, this gentleman or this lady said they've worked with you, they did this, that, and that using these different tools. Can you vouch for their character and so on and so forth? And of course, we write tons and tons of references every day for job applications, for master's program, for those applying to their PhD, applying to different uh, visa applications across different organizations, leveraging their skills that they've gotten from Tenalytics. So these are some of the ways we've covered all these gaps. But I would expatiate on this a little bit, and then we'll take Q&A uh, before we wrap up our session for today. Now, and that's the reason why you choose Tenalytics, because you ask the question, I can learn data analytics anywhere, but why do you choose Tenalytics as your learning partner? We don't refer to Tenalytics as a training as a training company, as a training outfit. We refer to Tenalytics as a learning partner. Why is that very important? You see the other 50% I talked about. If your technical skill forms 50%, what is the other 50%? So that other 50% is, is, the, is what I want to share with you now. OK, so one of the things you also need to do is we help you with an up to date curriculum. So the ask you going on different websites, information is everywhere today. You go on YouTube, you see a whole ton of stuff and you start, you don't know where to stop. You don't know what is enough. There is no structure to how you learn. So you have an up to date structured curriculum. That we bring to bear designed by industry experts. So you have industry experts who are not just teaching you, but are also sharing experience. This is how it is done. When you solve a problem like this, so when you're faced with a problem like this, this is how you approach. This was how I did it when I worked in this company or that company and so on and so forth. You also have a blended approach to learning. You don't have to be in class every day to learn. No, you be in class on Saturday, you have your physical session, you have your classes, of course, it's virtual instructor-led. You have the instructor who is showing you projects, showing you how to solve different things, and you have the opportunity to engage and ask questions. 
additional employability services. This is the most important part of being with Tenalytics, this part, the additional employability services. Because you're competing with very intelligent people out there, but it's not the most intelligent that gets the job. Is the person that is able to present themselves in the best possible form. I repeat that is not the most intelligent person that gets the job, but that person that is able to present themselves in the best possible form. Okay, and I'll speak to that shortly. You also get your sorry about that. You also get interview preparation. Okay, sim interview simulation. How will your interview be, your internship, and also simulate the real world environment for you? Okay, so when you get a job, how will you, how will you, you know, apply yourself to solving different problems depending on the circumstance and so on? So you have the opportunity to intern with us. And all of this makes you a master data analyst when you complete your program with us at Analytics. Now, looking at the additional employability services, this is, I always say, the game changer. And this is what has made us successful across the years. And this is the other 50%. And what has helped us get over a thousand people into tech. Okay, I keep on telling people this. It's not how intelligent you are. Of course, you have to know your stuff. That's very important. But the other 50% is your CV. Do you have a CV that presents you in the best possible form? Can your CV go past the ATS system? Do you have the right keywords? And so on and so forth. Your CV is your representation in paper format. How good is your CV? I see so many CVs and it's unbelievable that a professional who has worked for over 15 years has a CV like that. Perhaps the person has not been you know, searching for jobs and has just been on a single role. And then you find CVs that are appalling. <laughs> That's simply what I'll call them because you can't simply get a job in any, you can't get a job anywhere using CVs like that. So how do you have the best possible CV to get you into the positions that you want to get into? We help you review your CV and we also help you CV. We, help, we show you how to build one and how to match your CV and tailor that CV to the job requirements, leveraging different AI tools. ChatGPT is one of them, one of the major tools that can easily help you match your CV to a job requirement. We'll show you how to do that, how to do that using job analytics, how to do that using job scan, and so many other tools available. LinkedIn optimization. This is your number one proof of work, all right? I can't see your CV with all the fantastic stuff, data analytics with analytics, and I go to your LinkedIn and I can't see the same set of skills. I can't see you talking about data analytics. So your number one proof Social proof is your LinkedIn profile. Some people don't have LinkedIn, all right? As a professional who is serious about transitioning, you can't ignore LinkedIn. I can't overemphasize the importance of LinkedIn and not just having a LinkedIn profile, but of course, an optimized LinkedIn profile. And then for those who want to get remote jobs, you have Upwork. If you don't have an Upwork profile, we'll work with you to create one. If you have one, we'll optimize your Upwork profile. Navigating the job market. Fantastic, amazing session. We have sessions to show you how to navigate the job market every week. All right? So how do you navigate the job market? I'm in the UK. I'm a student. I am this. I'm studying this. How do you move from that from a student visa to a skilled worker visa as a data analyst, for example. What are the things you need to look at? Oh, I'm in Canada. I want to go through the PR, PR route. I mean, I'm currently doing my postgraduate diploma. What do I need to consider? What are the requirements? How can I start to understand the opportunities that are available from the global talent visa in the UK, to the Tech Pass program in France, and so many other regions that provide opportunities for people in the data space. And these are the things we bring to bear during the Navigating the Job Market session. Recommendation and references. This is something we do for everybody that has gone through our program because employers would always reach out to us. Guess why? 
you have indicated analytics as part of your work experience. So what happens is employers reach out to us to say, oh, this person has um, requested or has indicated you as a referee. Can you provide reference and recommendation? Can you tell us if you, are you going to rehire this person? Can you tell us if this person has a disciplinary issue? How good is this person? What's the character of this person? Integrity. Every employer wants to know who they're hiring. So references and recommendation, you want a reputable organization that can vouch for you, all right? So when I tell you that 50% is the technical, anybody can get the technical, but very few people can get the other 50%. Interview preparation. We are having an interview preparation simulation session in about um, 35 minutes. After this session, I'm joining that session, which is the mentorship session we have every Thursday evenings. We have a mentorship session. And what we are focusing on today, we have four different roles, data analyst, business analyst, data engineer, and power platform. We created job vacancies, fictitious job vacancies, and people applied, people that are currently in our program doing their training with us. They applied to those roles. So myself, the co-founder, we're going to ask them questions on a live call with over 300 people. And then they get to answer those questions as if they were in an interview and then we provide feedback at the end of those sessions. So we, we help you prepare for interviews. Apart from the job simulation, interview simulation sessions, when you have an interview coming up, you also schedule your interview. You have a link in the platform. You click on that link and it takes you to where you enter your details and schedule your interview. You have a professional who will work with you to help you answer and prepare for that interview. Answer simple questions. You're always going to get questions like, tell me about yourself. Can you walk me through your career journey? These are very, these are basic questions you get. But every, a lot of people struggle to answer questions like that. And you have different approach, different approaches to answering those type of questions on tell me about yourself, questions on can you tell me about a time you have used Excel or you've used Power BI to do this or do that? How do you structure your story? How do you introduce yourself using something we call the SEAT approach? You start with your skills, your experience, your achievements, and your type of person. All right. How do you talk about the stories? How do you talk about the things you've done as a data analyst? You use something we call the STAR approach for competency-based questions during interviews. All right. The situation, the task, the action, and the results. So what was the situation? What was the task required? What action did you take specifically? And what was the result of your action? All right. So how do you structure things in this way that is logical and constructive to answering questions during interviews? And you have your weekly mentorship sessions every Thursday evenings. And we also provide on the job support. All right. So the mentorship session is something that I, 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 hold, I hold it very dear because when I was starting my journey, starting my career as a data analyst, I had no mentors. And it was very, very difficult. When you have to figure things out yourself, it's very difficult compared to when you have somebody you can ask questions every single week. Oh, this is what I've seen. This is what this is the challenge I'm facing at this point in time. What do you think I can do? What's your suggestion? So you have that opportunity to get that. All right. So this forms the other 50 percent. That is the game changer to you making that transition. Without this, you would struggle for years. And I would love you to listen to Benga's story, which I'll play. I'll play the video for you. You listen to Benga. Benga moved to Poland from Nigeria. Um, he had stayed for over two years trying to get a job, but he couldn't. He joined our program and he was able to, he joined our data analytics program, completed the program, had series of interview sessions. We prepared him for those interviews and he got four offers, but I'd love you to listen to him yourself. So you get to hear his experience and what he was able to do eventually. So you also get to join the internship. I talked about the internship already, the growth internship program that helps you um, build additional projects that you add to your portfolio. 
And of course, some of the projects you'd work on, there are so many of them, but just to highlight a few, you'd work on Castro Technologies, which is a company you'll be helping to identify if they need to implement em some employee benefits, employee infrastructure based on the performance of employees in the organization. It's a fintech organization. You have the Nestle product analytics case study. You'd work on this, helping Nestle understand their performance in different regions, online food delivery preference, helping this online delivery company understand and optimize their processes. And you do a budget and actual analysis for Truefit Industries. Now, budget versus actual is one of the most important things any organization would want. And I'm telling you this based on experience. Every organization at the beginning of the year or the, pre the end of the previous year would have a target for the new year. The owners of the business would want to know at every point in time, where are we with regards to the targets we have? What was our target for January? What was our target for Q1 2023? Where are we? What is the actual for Q1 2023? Looking at different metrics. It could be revenue. It could be cost. It could be number of customers. But then every organization wants a budget versus actual analysis. This is a project you'd work on. You'd work on fraudulent transactions, identifying fraudulent transactions in the bank using Power BI, employee attrition within an organization. You'd identify what data science salaries across different locations look like. You do the analysis. You'd analyze employee tr time tracking, tracking the attendance of employees, getting data from an attendance tracking system for ACE analytics. You'd work on an aviation case study. You'd work on so many different case studies, HR case studies, a fundraising, where you'd help them to identify different fundraisers that could optimize and help them reach the people they would like to reach eventually. So numerous case studies, just to list a few that you would get to work on. Like I mentioned, the program is project based. And of course, you'd work with the cream of the crop individuals and professionals within the space, not people that learned on YouTube or learned on Coursera or learned people that have done the job and they're still doing the job. You learn from me. I'll be one of your facilitators as well. You'd see me every day, every week, I beg your pardon, during your mentorship sessions, just like I'll be joining one uh, in a few minutes after this session. You'd work with Efemena, who is the co-founder of Tenalytics. Efemena has worked with some of the biggest organizations in the UK, the post office, Teleflex, a medical technology company in Ireland, DPD, one of the largest logistics and delivery companies in Ireland as well. If Emena would work with you, you'd also see him during your mentorship sessions. You have opportunity to ask questions to professionals in your region, professionals within the same space that can help you shorten your learning curve. Something that will take you two years, two and a half years to learn. You get to learn them a lot shorter because you know the right track to take. Tony is a senior data associate, a data analytics lead, with Tenalytics, experts in the use of different platforms have helped to mentor over 5,000 people. She's worked in investment technology, banking, educational technology. You work with Mohammed. Mohammed is also a senior data associate with Tenalytics. He has worked with Alpha Romeo in the US, um, right from Nigeria, worked remotely right from Nigeria for some of the biggest organizations. You'd work with Ola Dapo. Ola Dapo works with Deloitte in Bermuda as a senior consultant. Ola Dapo is your go-to person when it comes to Microsoft Excel. So these are the professionals that would help you grow, that would help you learn, that will work with you every single week, step-by-step step until you get to where you're trying to get to as a data analyst. Olubemi Akaribo, a business data analyst with a law depot in Canada, one of the professionals that would also work with you as well. Braima SL Gena, senior data associate with Tenalytics, and so many other professionals across the globe that would help you make that transition. Nene, who is the who's going to teach you problem solving? Um, Nene works with Zelos in the UK. Uh, Zelos is an authorized licensee of Nike in the UK. You'd work with Teniola, you'd work with Inena, who is a product manager. You'd work with 
um, Obina, who is a data scientist in Canada and so on. And people always ask me the question, where can I apply to jobs? Because of time, I might not be able to go into job application for data analyst roles, but I've left some of the major job sites for you to check out. And it doesn't matter where you are, you can apply to these jobs, okay? Jobs in the UK, for example, one of the best place, places to apply to jobs in the UK, especially if you're looking for sponsored jobs, UK Hired, fantastic, gov.uk, and also read.co.uk. CV Library is fantastic if you want to get a job in the UK, all right? If you are not bothered about sponsorship, CV Library is absolutely fantastic. UK Hired, gov.uk, gov and read.co.uk are fantastic when searching for um, visa sponsorship jobs. UK Visa Jobs is also brilliant. It's fantastic. However, you'd have to make a subscription to UK Visa Jobs. But UK Hired, gov.uk, read.co.uk are free for you to use. And of course, in Canada as well, you have Monster, Robert Half. We've worked with Robert Half as a recruitment consultant in Canada, helping them source for different um, candidates. Olubemi that got a job. I showed you Olubemi's profile just a few um, minutes ago. Yes, Olubemi. Olubemi got his job through Robert Half. We working together with Robert Half. And that was how Olubemi was able to land his job in Canada. And of course, for those looking for remote jobs, you have flex jobs. LinkedIn is one of the most fantastic places you can get jobs, especially remote roles, because you have the opportunity to filter for those jobs. And if we have time, I'll show you how to do all of this. Well, we've also had multiple sessions, and this is what we show our participants every day, as long as you're registered with us. Where do you apply to these jobs? These are just this what you have here on the slides. You have just a few of these websites that you can go into. We show you this and practically we walk through how to apply to these jobs step by step, practically. Our next cohort starts on the 4th of November, right? We had a cohort that started, the October cohort started on the, uh, when was that? I think that was on the 9th of October, if I'm correct. Uh, Started, yeah, I think that was on the, I just want to confirm when we started in October, but the November cohort starts on the 4th of November. So the October cohort started on the 7th, 7th of October, right? Fantastic professionals in the different programs that we offer at Analytics. They've started their journey into different areas in tech. The next cohort starts on the 4th of November, 2023. Now, I'll go back to one question, the very essence of our session today. Is it easy or difficult to get started as a data analyst anywhere in the job, anywhere in the world, rather? Looking at everything I've showed you today, from the technical skill, problem solving, Excel, Power BI, SQL, Tableau, Microsoft Fabric, ChatGPT for analytics, data storytelling, all those eight different skills, including the other 50%, your CV, your LinkedIn, Upwork profile, how to navigate the job market, interview preparation, being the best. When you get in, when you get to the front of your interview panel members, you know the right things to say. You know how to structure your answers. Having mentorship sessions every week where you get to see people industry experts to ask different questions and so on and so forth. All those things would make it really easy. And that's why I say easy is very relative depending on who you are talking to. But having those two 50%, the technical and the support makes it very easy for you to get started and get a job anywhere across the globe. Like I promised, I want you to listen to two people Okay, two fantastic people, a, a gentleman and a lady. And you have, you're going to have my slides. So I'm not going to bore you with too many audio or too many videos. You'd have the opportunity to click on the link, listen to them, listen to the success story, how they were able to transition and why it was easy for them to transition with Tenalytics. <clears throat> I want you to listen to Ikmat, 
Ikmat was a stay-at-home mom in the UK for four, for two years, if I'm correct. I can't remember, but you hear it in our video. And then she got a job with the NHS in the full sponsorship here in the UK, got a job with the NHS as a data analyst. She worked with one of our senior associates, Mohammed, who prepared her for our interview, and eventually she landed the job. All right. I also want you to listen to Benga. I worked with Benga personally, prepared him for his interview. Benga landed a job in Poland as a business data analyst after training with us. These two people, I want you to hear their story and you can then decide how easy or hard it is to make the switch into data analytics. <clears throat> I'll start with, who do you want me to start with? Let me ask you, Benga or Ikmat? Let's do a quick vote even though we don't have enough time. But let's do a quick vote. Who would you want me to play first? Augustine says Ikmat. I want just five. If five people say Ikmat, oh, ladies first, absolutely. All right. So ladies first, let's listen to Ikmat and then we come back to Benga. All right. So I'm going to click on this. It opens up into my browser. Give me a second. Um, let me see. Yep. All right. So I want you to hear what Ikmat is saying. So I'll share my sound and I'll play it now. All right. So everybody's saying ladies first. Okay, I've agreed. I've considered. Let's listen to Ikmat. All right. So listen, relax, and listen to what Ikmat has to say. It's about three minutes, three minutes long video. And then Benga's video is about two minutes. So you just get to listen to them, hear their story, how they were able to transition. Trust me, absolutely phenomenal everyone my name is Ikmat and um, I was with the match called Inter Analytics and joining Inter Analytics has been the best decision so far you know for me someone coming from a background of full housewife because I had to stay back home to look after my child for four years and then wanting to break into something new wanting to go back into work into the workforce you know wanting to place myself in the society for better job opportunities, so it was a lot. And then I'm glad that Tenalytics came along and then they presented me with so many opportunities right in front of me, better opportunities. And then I'm glad I took it. And then <clears throat> uh, also the advice of do not sell yourself short, that if it's always the, it's very, very valid because Place yourself right, you know, don't sell yourself short. It's a very, very, very valid advice. You know, internalytics, they will hold your hands like a child, you know, through through the models. You have to you have the opportunity to go back and study. You have the opportunity to go back and practice. You have the opportunity to ask questions. You know, we have people you can always go back to even outside of class, class hours. It's it's the most amazing experience so far, really. And then Another thing is the interview prep, guys. That is another very important thing. I did my interview prep with Mr. Mohammed, and it is the best decision ever because he was like he saw into the future. He knew what was going to be asked. And I'm glad that I took, I wrote down all the things he mentioned. I went back to practice. And then when it was time for the interview, it was like everything he was mentioning, everything he mentioned, it was just, they kept on. And then when I was answering those questions, I was so confident, you know, because I already practiced. I did an Excel test, I did a math test, and then they were really impressed. And another thing is, guys, it may not come as fast as you expect. Definitely, you are going to get some no's, and then you may begin to think you're not good enough. You are good enough, yes. The no's will come, but always take it as a basis for learning and development, because after every interview where I got a no, I always make sure I get a personal feedback. So I work on those feedbacks. For my next interviews and yes it worked it really worked for me because i got my first job three months into the program my first job but i couldn't take up the job because i was still, there was a student and i was only eligible to do to work 20 hours so i couldn't take up the job three months later i got two jobs with full visa sponsorship and guys all the other no's before the two jobs prepared me for the yeses i got so yes the no's will come but do not give up because you always have the analytics to go back to. They are the best, best, and the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then, yes, um, and 
they are the, the most affordable. The most affordable one I've come across so far. That's the very good advantage. So. Yes, the analytics for the win. Okay, that's Ikmat. Um, so that's Ikmat's story. Fantastic story. I'm always very it's always very nice listening to Ikmat's story every single time, even though I've listened to it like about a hundred times now. So let's listen to Benga's story. All right. And then we'll talk about what it takes to join the program, the cost and everything. And then we call it a day. So let's listen to Benga very quickly. Benga is shorter, I think by about, it's about two minutes. So let's listen to Benga. Benga's story is also phenomenal. And I'm sure you'll enjoy listening to him as well. So let's listen to Benga. Hello everyone, my name is Alago Jubenga. I want to share the testimony of how I searched for my job and, and I was able to secure a very good job by the help of Tenalytics. I was searching for a job for almost two years before five months ago and I, come up, I came across Tenalytics on Instagram. I sent a DM and they were helpful. I enrolled in the data analytics course and it was awesome. I learned a lot about Excel, um, um, data analytics, Tableau, and using uh, how to organize data and also to draw insights from data, how to build a dashboard and also to write a report from um, conclusions of data. So. Um, I must say, Tenalytics is the right place to learn how to be a data scientist, how to be a data analyst, how to be an HR analyst, and so on like that. They are always around, and they are always, um, they have the best hands to take care of your needs when it comes to data. So, um, I enrolled in the course, and even during the course, I was, I started applying for jobs and I started getting interview calls and they were also available to um, um, to explain and also give me preparation questions on how to approach these interviews and also to pass them. So I was able to secure and even get about four offers after um, all my interviews, interview sessions. So I must say that the analytics have been really, really been a great help to me. And I was able to secure a job of my dreams, literally. So thank you. Refer people, tell your friends about them, enroll today and the sky is your limit. Thank you so much. Right, that was Binga. Um, I've had several conversations with Benga and I can't even start to tell you when he says the job of my dreams, he, it's really the job of his dreams. Well, fantastic offer, fantastic remuneration. Benga is doing very well today as a business data analyst in Poland after two years of trying to search for a job and he couldn't get a job and so many other success stories, but you get to watch them yourself. Ensure that you subscribe to our YouTube channel. You have all those videos on YouTube, on Instagram, on LinkedIn, on Twitter, or X, okay? Follow us across all our platforms. So you get to see the amazing work that we do and how we've helped so many professionals, including Ramat over here as well, to make that switch into data analytics and into tech generally across different areas now a lot of people have been sending me messages how much what does it take to be a part of the program how much does it take so if you're paying in pounds it's 400 pounds to join the next cohort that start that's starting on the 4th of november or you pay 400 000 naira if you're making payments in naira and you can split the payments into two installments of 250 pounds and 150 or 250,000 and 150,000. But I have a special discount for you guys. Uh, like I mentioned, we give this discount um, ahead of the program starting, okay? So instead of paying 400 pounds or instead of paying 400,000, you have a whopping discount of 100 pound. So rather than paying 400 pounds, you get to pay 300 pounds, 200 to get into the program, and then 100 one month after the program commences. Or if you're paying in Naira, you get to pay 300,000 Naira to get 
as a discounted fee instead of 400,000. So you have a 100,000 Naira discount and then you get to pay 200,000 to get into class and then a 100,000 one month after the program commences. And if you're paying in Canadian dollars, you're in Canada, 500 Canadian dollars instead of 600. And you get to pay 350 to get into class, 150 one month after the program commences. Now the discount is available, not to everybody, but to the first 20 participants to register from this session, all right? And we always give this, and I'll give you what typically happens. Within two days, three days, the whole discount slots are gone. And people reach out to us to say, oh, Adesa, how can I still join? Can you still make the discount available? So it's an early bird discount for those who want to get into their program in November 2023. Once you make payments, and I'll show you how to make payments shortly. Once you make payments, you get into the program, you get a welcome kit. The welcome kit contains all the, all the materials, all the different applications you need to download and install, your lesson plan from when you start to when you'd end and so on and so forth. So to make payment to be in any of the program, the data analyst to join the data analytics program for the 4th of November. Once you get the slide, which my colleagues would also share with you, just click on this link and then it takes you into, um, it takes you into the page, the payment page, which would come up shortly. And then I'll show you how to make payments to join the program. You can make payments using different options, depending on your own preference. All right, you can make payments in Naira using the Paystack option. And for those in Ghana, we always advise them as well to make use of the Paystack option. All right, so once you make use of the Paystack option, it does the conversion for you automatically. And then you can make your payments also using the Paystack option. And if you're in Europe, um, I don't know why this is taking a bit of a, a, bit of a while to come up, but it, is, it will come up and I'll show you what and how to make payments to get into the program. And if you're in Europe, you can make payments using the PayPal option, and then you have access to the program. All right, I'm just going to wait a little bit more uh, for this to come up. Uh, while that is coming up, of course, you can also make payments doing a direct transfer. Uh, my colleagues will share the link in the chat as well. So you have access to that. For the first 20 people to get into the class, I would enjoy the discount. And of course, you can also make payments doing a transfer to our pound account for those in the UK who want to make payments using uh, payments using the pound option, a direct transfer. If you're making payments in Naira, you can make payments to our Fidelity Bank account using the Naira option. And all you have to do once you do a direct transfer is take a screenshot of your proof of payment. And then you have the option to upload um, your proof of payments using the link that I clicked on, just waiting for it to come up and then I'll show you how to navigate all of that. And of course, if you ever want to reach out to us, you have the option to also send us messages on WhatsApp using any of these numbers, all right? So you have a question, you want to set up um, a one-on-one -on -one session, which for some people, they get confused. Oh, I've done this for 10 years. I don't know if data analytics is the best for me. You can set up clarity sessions, which is more of a one-on-one -on -one session, and then would help you take that decision or guide you in taking the decision, okay? Now, one other thing that we, all, we also get most of the time, people ask the question around, I want to join. The program will start on the 4th of November. How do I still take advantage of the discount today? even though the program starts on the 4th of November. So let's assume you're making payments in pound and the first payment is 200 pounds to get into the program. I always advise, you can take, you can pay 100 pounds to get into the program, secure your discount slot. And then before the program commences on the 4th of November, you make the balance payment of the 100 to cover for the first 200 that you need to pay or if you're paying in Naira, similar option as well. Rather than paying 200,000, you can pay 100, take advantage of the discount. And before the program starts, you make the balance payment of 100 to form the first uh, installment of 200,000 to be a part 
of the program. All right. Um, the, the link is not coming up at the moment, but again, um, let's just, I'm just going to refresh and see if it comes up and then I'll show you how to also make payments using the pay stock option. Remember the discount is for the first 20 people from this session to register. I'll take questions uh, within the next five to 10 minutes and then would we'll call it a day for today. Now you have so many testimonial. I want you to also listen to um, Tony's story. And I'll tell you the reason why I want you to listen to Tony. Once you, when you receive the slide, listen to Tony. Click on the link and listen to Tony. Tony has a medical background, all right? She had never done tech before. She joined the program and she got a job as a benefits analyst with the NHS. The NHS has recruited the highest number of our of our Tenalytics alumni. They always recruit. Of course, the NHS in the UK is one of the largest organizations. And of course, they also give sponsorship when they recruit you into um, their organization. So listen to Tony's story, also very fantastic. She got her job one month after joining our program. And that's because we tell people, look, don't wait until you are done with the entire program. Once you are done with Excel, start applying to jobs because you'd find organizations that want you to just have that Excel skill to get into, um, to get to work for them. Okay. So once you're done with Excel, start to apply to jobs, listen to Luke Baby as well. Very interesting story. And of course, you can also get to listen to all the other stories from, read the stories from all the fantastic people that have gotten jobs after completing their programs with us. From Amaka, who works as a business support analyst with one of the councils here in the UK, to Stephen, who works as a junior data analyst with the Access Group, to Whistling, who works as a sales analyst with Shell here in the UK, to Emeka, to Lugbemi, to Ubong, to Uthman, to Nathaniel. Listen to all the fantastic stories, read their stories, and see how they were able to go through our platform and eventually emerge as data analysts in different regions. Um, Abdul Rashid works from Nigeria, Ilorin Kwara State, and he works for a company in the US called Child 420. So, how do you access those remote jobs? you get to also see how that would be possible. Some of the major achievements, like I mentioned earlier, we've been able to help out over a thousand people to transition into the tech ecosystem over the last three years. And our participants work in some of the biggest and the best organizations across the globe. We've also gotten featured across different uh, publications, given the work we've done over the last three years, the business day, featuring us, how Africans across, we've helped Africans across four continents land tech jobs to the different hackathons we organized, Narometrics featured, read all the publications to see the amazing work we've done within the space. March this year, 2023, we gave scholarship to 300 women, and this was also featured in Tech Cabal showing how we are driving the inclusion of women in tech because women are largely disenfranchised. You have just 25% of tech roles um, currently occupied by women. So we are trying to also increase that number by getting as many women into tech. Now, this initiative has proved very successful because guess what? Ramat, and I'm just going to go back because I'm always very excited to say this. Okay, so the, the scholarship we gave in March, number one, Tony was a beneficiary of the scholarship. Ramat was a beneficiary of the scholarship and Ikmat was also a beneficiary of that scholarship. So we've been, if even if these are the only three people we've been able to get into tech through the scholarship, I'd say it's been a successful venture for us so far all right so i'm going to take questions very quickly and then would we'll call it a day so if you have questions please feel free to use the raised hand icon and then i'll get you to unmute yourself and i can take your questions and then we call it a day um how does the discount work the discount is very simple you have that here 
you can take a screenshot of what you have on the screen. This is the discounted fee, all right? 300 pounds, 200 to get into the class, to get registered, and then 100 one month after the class starts. So if you start 4th of November, you would have paid 200 pounds to get into the class. One month after, which is 4th of December, you get to pay the balance of 800 pounds. Okay, so that's how it works um, really. All right, so I'll take questions from four people. I can see four hands raised. I'll take those questions and then we call it a day. All right, so Adeleke, I've asked you to unmute yourself. Please go ahead and unmute yourself, Adeleke. Hi. Hello, Adeza. Hi, Muti. Go Please. ahead, please. Let me start by thanking your team. You guys are doing a very wonderful job. Thank you. However, this might not be the right platform, but I really need to speak with you. Okay. I need assistance. I'm currently in the October cohort, but I'm okay. having challenges. I don't know if this is the right platform, but I just need to speak with you, please. You want to speak with me personally? I think it is better. All right. So just send me an email, okay? I don't have your email. That's a challenge. Yes, I would sending, have. I'm sending it to you. I'm sending it to you now. Okay. I'm sending it to Thank you, you directly. so very much. Thank yes. you I'm so very much. Confirm once you've received it. Okay. okay. Thank you so very much. You're welcome, Muti. I just sent it to you now. All right. Okay. Via WhatsApp? No, no, no. On, on the, the Zoom call here, I just sent a direct message to you on Zoom. Okay, so I'll see that in my message. Yes. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I have it. All right. You're welcome, Muti. Okay, so just send me an email. I'll respond to you this evening. Okay. Uh, Bruno, you have a question. Go ahead, Bruno. Okay, I'm not sure Bruno is ready. Uh, let me move on to Anthony. Anthony, please go ahead. Ask a question if you have questions, Anthony. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon. Yeah, I, I really want to thank you guys for what you guys are doing. Please, okay. I I really want to ask and appeal. Can you hear me? Loud and clear. Go ahead. All right. Thank you very much. Um. Concerning you guys' scholarship, because we that are here in Nigeria, most times the, the financial challenge is always a serious matter. So please, we are, I'm asking, is there no sort, uh, no sort of uh, scholarship that is being uh, um, incorporated into this program, maybe in every cohort, or, or maybe a kind of... Um, Payment platform that whereby once the person is done, start working, then the person will start paying. Or any other payment platform, maybe through a kind of a student uh, loan that you people, your organization uh, collaborate with um, any other organization, maybe financial organization that can fund them or sponsor the program. Then when the person is done, the person will now start paying. Because these are some of the areas that some persons that like us that doesn't have the cash yeah. can benefit and uh, still be testimonials onto this. Yeah. All right. Thank you for that, uh, Mr. Anthony. So um, now what we do at the moment, uh, we have a very deliberate effort. We or we've made very deliberate efforts to get in as many people into the into tech as much as we can, especially Africans, people of the black community. However, one of the ways, and if you also check and see, um, do your own research across different platforms for the value that we bring and the value that we offer, our price is still very considerably reasonable. You heard that from, uh, what's her name now, Ikmat, if you listen to the feedback. And for anybody here in the UK, for anybody back home in Nigeria, looking at the opportunities that are that await you getting a job within the space, it's very reasonable to be a part, uh, to um, be a part of our program by making the payments, like I mentioned, all right? So what we've done to help you or to also make it easy is to give you options. 
All right. So rather than paying the whole amount one in one swoop, you can make the payments in installments. Okay. And what I always tell people is this: what is if I ask, looking at all the value that we're going to bring, looking at the professionals, the experts that would help you get into your the career path that you'd like to get into, what's the ideal amount to charge? Nobody, I've asked this question to anybody that has engaged me personally, and they really cannot give um, a specific answer to that. So unfortunately, we don't have a scholarship ongoing at the moment. Um, I'm not going to have anyone anytime soon as well. What we have at the moment uh, that you can also take advantage of is the discounts available. All right. Rather than 400 pounds or 400,000, you get to make payments of 300 pounds or 300,000 to be a part of the program. All right. So I can take two more questions. I'm interested, but the payment option is too high. Um, do try connecting your audio. Okay, can't hear you. I really want to join this cohort. Um, so like I mentioned, you don't have to pay 200 pounds 200 pounds today. You don't have to pay 200,000 today. The program starts on the 4th of November, but you can take advantage of the discount by making your payments, making the beat payment and then completing it before the program commences. I'll take the next person, Reverend Ubong. Please go ahead. All right, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Let me also lend my voice with others who have actually commended the, the organizers and the facilitators of this program. It's really very interesting, highly educating, and very informative. Uh, thank you. The challenge, the challenge we have this other side of Nigerians is the issue of uh, the 300, even when you now say, okay, you can pay 100 for to secure the leverage yeah. and then pay the other 100, you may agree with me if you are within the country to know that it's not easy to raise such amount of money within one month because of the pile up of bills and a lot of challenges that is surrounding the economy of the moment. But uh, I think I may want to lean my voice with the second speaker who I just finished trying to ask for uh, other options of leverage. That is, the court is coming in by October, November 4th. The next one will be in December. Now, yeah. if somebody can, can somebody now pay a kind of something like a mini deposit up to it before he gets there? Is there a provision like that? That is, can somebody make some droppings into the account until he gets to what he wants and then he can be enrolled? Or can somebody allow to like say, okay, now it's 300,000. If you pick 100,000, I can allow you before the end. So it's going to last for about four months. Before the end of the first two months, the other balance must have come in. These are all subleached with to balance, to, so, to sub land most persons from Africa and specifically Nigerian because of the current realities in the country. So my appeal or my advocacy is on the strength that let's look for some landing offering opportunities for those who are within the country of it. I've carefully listened to the package, so I wouldn't want to miss it, but I am trying to look at because already most of us had to tidy up kids to return back to school pay some bills and all of that in September, October. And then this program is coming in November and you're supposed to pay on or before November 4th, the 200,000. It's not very, um, uh, how would I put it? It's not very, uh, very visible at the moment. And December is also by the corner, which is the end of the year with a lot of festival and activities and heat up within the year. So I don't know if there's any way or any uh, kind of uh, outlets that could be proposed to kind of sort of land those who are here and who are very genuine and sincere and so yeah. wish to be part of the November uh, court. Yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Reverend Dr. Ubong. Now, we've been, like I mentioned, we've been in business for the past three years and there is no model we haven't tried and we haven't implemented, all right? So um, what I'll recommend is you want a specific type of payment plan okay. that fits your current um 
um, situation or, or this is what you want to do and so on, yeah. reach out mm -hmm. to us on any of these numbers. Okay? Yeah. Reach out okay. to us on any of these numbers. And one of our customer success associates would work with you to see what is feasible and then okay. give you an advice on what uh, you can do as well. But trust me, if I make it open to everybody that, oh, this is what you can do, we'll, we'll get all sorts of things. Because like I mentioned... Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. No, your point is no. Absolutely. Is absolutely. Correct. Very clear. It's all, all right. It's also right. it's also interesting. I wish you could be very precise of any particular number I can take. Oh yes, the number is on the screen. Any of them, reach out on any of the numbers you can see on the screen. Just take a screenshot, reach out to any of the numbers, just send a WhatsApp message. Somebody would reach out to you. Constance is saying, I reached out yesterday, the same thing. All right. Um, can I have your email? Adebola is sending me that. Okay, so again, um, like I mentioned, it's interesting to also find out that every single month when we have our program, the bulk of the number of people that join, join from Nigeria, the bulk, followed by the UK and then Canada. And of course, that's simply because of the mass migration of people moving into the new economy. They want to compete for the best jobs. And I'll give you a typical example this is the September cohort um, for the EU, uh, September cohort for the EU. So EU means people that are in the same region, the UK, people that are in um, Nigeria, Ghana, similar time zone. And this is data analytics, September 2309. You can see that. How many people in this class? 57. All right. And you also have the North America for data analytics as well, the same September. So depending on where you are joining from. So we have 29 people that joined for the month of September. And again, you have the month of October. And I'll show you what the platform looks like and how you would learn as well. So for the month of October, so if you register and you join, this is what you'd see. You'd only see the course, of course, you have paid for. So let's assume you joined in November, you'd see data analytics, EU, you are joining from Nigeria, you're joining from the UK. And if I open this up, for example, and I go to classwork or people, how many people registered here? 60 students in this particular cohort for the month, for the month of October that just started on the 7th of October. So let's see what they've done so far. So first of all, you have your onboarding materials, all right, where you get your welcome kit, how to install Office, how to download SQL, your onboarding session to show you how to navigate the platform. And then you join the problem solving. So problem solving is the very first thing you do. And you have advantage of coming back to the recording. So if you miss the class, for example, you haven't missed anything. All you do is come to the class recording, click on the link and you have access to the recording. You also have the slides as well. So this is the beauty of virtual learning. You don't miss anything at all. So if I click on the link on the slide, for example, you'd see the slide that was used on that particular day. What is data? That's where you start from. So people that ask, is it beginner friendly? The answer is yes. You don't jump into building stuff. You start from the basics, the nitty gritty, and then you move all the way, types of data, what is data analytics? What types of data analytics? We talked about descriptive and diagnostic today, right? And that's the scope of the data analyst. Predictive and prescriptive is for the data scientist. So you'd understand all of this and then you start to get a good grasp of what the class entails. And then you move into the Watch Me Do It video for Excel, okay? And then, of course, this is what they've done so far. On the 8th of October, you can see they're currently watching their Watch Me Do It video. And the next Saturday, this Saturday, they have their first Excel class. And this is the mentorship session that I held last week. It's an interview simulation session. Interview simulation. Okay, so I'll show you what the job role looks like. So this was the job role we used to simulate the interview, like I mentioned. All right, so job title, data analyst, company, analytics, location, Manchester, job full-time, job opening. So you have the opening, people apply to the job and then we ask them questions, they answer. And this is what the mentorship session itself looks like. 
Okay, so um, this is for the month of October, like I said. Uh, the month of September, uh, so let's move to September. So they have done a bit more, of course, because they started a little bit earlier. So you see some of the projects that they've worked on. And I'll show you just one or two. And then I think we can call it a day. So if we look at the Excel class, just similar to how October also started, onboarding materials, onboarding session, welcoming you to Tenalytics, your problem solving class, your Microsoft Excel, watch me do it after problem solving. And then you move on to your live class, class material. Let's look at the case study. Every single live class comes with a case study. All right. So here you have three case studies, the budget versus actual, ACE analytics, and deriving meaningful insights. So you work on this case study on the very first day of your live Excel class. So all the things you watched in the Watch Me Do It videos, you implement them in the live class. All right. And then you move into the second Watch Me Do It video. You have an assignment on Excel, which is a case study as well. And then you have your second Excel class, which is also case study based. All your classes are case study based. This is for a particular university working on how to help them enhance information retrieval. And of course, what is your task? Your task is to use the VLOOKUP function, which you would have learned from the Watch Me Do It, implement it to solve all these different problems. This is your data sets and so on and so forth. Okay, so this is what the platform looks like. And this is how you learn from us at Tenalytics. Okay, so once, once again, secure your discounts, get into the program. For somebody like Dr. Rev, uh, Reverend Dr. Ubong that mentioned, oh, I might not be able to make all the payment today. What are the options available to me? Send us a message on any of these numbers that you have here. All right, and then we'll work something out for you. But again, as the class starts on the second of on the fourth of November, you want to make the payment, the first installment to get into the class. All right. I have a few questions about attending and scheduling. I can take just one more question, one more question, and then would we'll call it a day. I don't know. Joan, are you here? Are you on the call, Joan? Uh, let me see if Joan is here. Joan, if you're here, please send me a message. So I'll leave you to take the remain the questions people have while I need to run into. I can't speak. All right. Okay. So let me take one more question. Sue, I've asked you to unmute yourself. All right. So go ahead and ask a question. Guys, you also have the opportunity to um organize a one-on-one -on -one session a clarity session for some of you we can't take all the questions and i know you'd have questions to ask so you can when you get the link when you receive the recording today click on the link indicates that you want a one-on-one -on -one session and i will come on board to help answer some of the questions or concerns that you have as well okay so sue go ahead and ask a question please uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for this uh, meeting. Uh, I have a few questions uh, because I work on Sundays and Saturdays. If I work in retail and I don't have like a fixed schedule, like weekends and all that stuff. Uh, my concern is like um, about the attendance. Uh, if I can, let's say, access the classes like the next day or something like that and learn All right, so, so yes, I got you. So like I mentioned earlier, uh, if you work on Saturdays and Sundays, now what that means is it depends. When when do you do you go to work in the when do you come back from work on Saturday? Do you go in the morning, come in the because evening? Because I, I, I'm from the US and my time is it's like uh like I heard you saying it's uh eleven here in the US or something yeah. like that. Yes. Yeah. Because, like I said, I, I don't have fixed schedule. Sometimes, let's say on Sundays or Saturdays, I work at 9 a.m. till 5 p.m. Sometimes I work, let's say, from 12 to 7. It depends. 
I... Okay. All right. So what you what you need to do in that in that sense or in that situation is very simple. Every single material that you have that was that will be taught or delivered in every single class you have it here in your classroom so let's assume on a saturday you miss the class because you had a you you have a schedule to go into the office and get things done you come back to the to the classroom and you have access to the class recording the class materials the class slides and so on and so forth all right on sundays you don't have a live class. Sundays are for Watch Me Do It. And let me show you what a Watch Me Do It looks like. All right? So if I open this Watch Me Do It video, for example, now module one of the Watch Me Do It is introduction to Excel. You don't need an advisor to be on a call to introduce you to Excel. You can watch a video to do that. All right? The second video is on Paste Special, which is something you can watch and get it done yourself so you watch all these videos that introduces you to the basics of in the excel environment how to utilize excel and so on and so forth and then the following weekend which is the following saturday you have your live class so the live class is where you have your trainer you have a facilitator like myself um, let me just show you you have a facilitator like myself that will take that particular class all right. So this is the first live Excel class, for example. If you miss it for any reason, you have the class recording. All you have to do is come to the recording, click on the class recording, and then it takes you to the live class that happened. And you can get to watch it at your own convenience when you have time during that day. So you don't miss anything. You also have several communication channels from WhatsApp to Slack and so on. You can interact with your trainers, your facilitators. And if for any reason you watch the video, you can't still get what was done in class. We have something we call the drop-in session. So the drop-in session is designed for people like Sue, for example, who missed a class and Sue watched the, re the video, the recording, but did not really get what was you know, taught. He tried to implement some functions. He did not get it right. The drop-in sessions are organized in collaboration with the participants. So your data coach would reach out to you or you reach out to the data coach, oh, I have a problem here. I need you to help me out. And a drop-in session is organized. So the drop-in session is where Sue and the data coach would jump on a call and the data coach would show you what to do, all right? So with that blended approach, it's difficult to miss out completely. So you might not attend the live class, but you have the opportunity to join subsequent classes and also get the materials that was taught and that was used during the live class itself. So again, um, 11 a.m. in the UK, for those in the US, you have your own class that happens at 4 p.m. UK time, for example. However, if you go to, go to the office 11 a.m. Um, in the US, you're likely going to miss that class as well. So what it means is you have to make do with the class recording and so on and so forth, just like I've explained. So that's that would be my advice to you. I don't know if that uh, helps to answer. Okay, one, one more question. If let's yes. say I sign up for the, the class of 11 p.m., uh, 11 a.m., sorry. Uh, yes. Is there a way, let's say, whenever I want to switch to the early one, I can attend the early one? Absolutely. You can switch anytime you want to switch. Okay. Anytime you want to switch, you can switch. All you have to, you have a, a class coordinator, you have a data coach assigned to every single class. All right. So all you have to do is reach out to your data coach. The data coach for the data analytics program is Joan. She's currently on the call with us. Once you reach out to Joan, Joan would help you address those issues. Oh, I want to move to the morning class. I want to move to the evening class. And she makes those necessary arrangements for you. Sounds good. Thank right. you. You're welcome, Sue. Okay. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. So, guys, um, I'd have to, I'd have to run. Like I mentioned, if you have questions that you'd like me to answer, all you have to do is indicate when you receive the link.
for the clarity session. You'll get that in your email. You'd get that in the WhatsApp community if you are part of the community. So you have a one-on-one -on -one session. I'll come on the call with other data associates would help you to answer some of the pertinent questions that you have that we might not have enough time to answer today because of time. Okay, uh, we're already about 20 minutes um, beyond when we should have wrapped up today. All right, guys, take advantage of the discounts. Like I always tell, tell people, every single month we have sessions like this and you'll be shocked that even when the October cohort has started last week, last weekend on the 7th of October, people are still begging this week. Today, I had two people I had to turn down and tell them to join the November cohort because they want to join uh, programs that have commenced already. So again, and the discount is not available to them. They have to make the full payments as well. So guys, take advantage of the discount. If you want to get into tech, Tenalytics is your go-to place. If you've joined this session, you've, been, you've learned one or two things, you enjoyed yourself, but perhaps you have other commitments at the moment that will stop you from joining. But you have a brother, you have a sister, you have a colleague that you think can benefit from any of our programs. Share the message with them. When you get the, meet, the, the recording, share it with them. Follow us across all our platforms as well, from Instagram to LinkedIn to X to um, Facebook, across all the, all the social media channels. Follow us. So you get updated with all the different um, initiatives we'll be bringing to you from time to time. I hope you've learned one or two things today. And I want to say a big thank you for spending your Thursday evening with me, about two hours, 30 minutes. Thank you very much, guys. Have a wonderful evening. We'll have a series of sessions that will come up during the month of October. So be a part of it and get to learn something fantastic. We'll have practical sessions where... You would open your Excel, would open Excel, would look at different problems together, would look at Power BI, would look at how to leverage chat GPT in different capacities. All right. Have an amazing evening, amazing afternoon, depending on where you're from. And until we see you another time again, have a wonderful time, guys. And cheers.